Hello, I am Joshua P. Warren, and this is Joshua P. Warren Daily, and I'm going to give you some magical words of protection that you definitely need as we proceed through this month, because before I get into that, it's really a tradition for me to talk about why that the month of April is historically a notorious month and boy we're seeing it play out again if you've listened to me for years even going back to the speaking of strange days you'll know that every april i like to point out why that april is this special and troubling month of transformation in fact i avoid planning things in april if i can which is why for example my conference that I have coming up in Vegas on May 29th. Um, I could have done that in April, but I said, no, 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 I'm going to put that off till May. Uh, Because I, at this point, believe that by then we'll be somewhat back to normal. We'll see, but I mean, that's what I believe. So if you're brand new to this concept I'm about to share with you, uh, just to let you know sort of how this occurred to me when I was in high school for a while I dated a girl named April and she was born in the month of April and I started to notice that a lot of bad things and weird things would happen around her birthday and so then I went back and started looking at the month of April historically and I was I was really overwhelmed by what I found so i again i touch on this pretty much every year but i think it's even more significant this year for the obvious reasons and it's easy to say april is a bad luck month because so many things that we historically as a global civilization consider bad happened in the month of april but Then it gets a little wishy-washy because sometimes you're like, well, this war started in April and then it ended in April. So I don't think you can just paint it black and white as good or bad. Um, It's a matter of perspective and point of view. But here in the Western world, and especially here in the United States of America, I think that a lot of things have happened that we would consider bad in the month of April. And you, you ask yourself, well, why, why is that? Well, hey, everything is uh, a matter of cycles, right? These are just mechanical wheels turning other little mechanical wheels in the universe. And it's a great system. And there is some method to the madness. There is some organization among what you might consider chaos if you're only looking from one point of view. So let's just, you know, start with my opinion of why that April is an outstanding month compared to other months. Uh, For one thing, it begins with April Fool's Day here, especially in the U.S. So it starts out with like, oh yeah, we're we're gonna play a joke on you, play a prank on you, make make an idiot of you. Also, allergies really start kicking in hard. And uh, no matter where I've lived, I always, uh, you know, I hate the uh, allergic stuff. I mean, I'm here in the desert now, and you have desert allergies. And when I was in North Carolina, you had all tons of tree allergies. And then in Puerto Rico, you had all kinds. So it's, it's an allergy month, so that sucks. And then also, if you happen to live in the U.S., then usually April is tax time, which can be a very stressful time for people as well. But, um, you know, the American Revolution started with Paul Revere's ride around April 18th to the 19th, 1775. The American Civil War started April of 1861 and ended April of 1865. So many historians call it the war across five Aprils. As a matter of fact, the Battle of Asheville, where I'm from, Asheville, North Carolina, took place in April. There were a lot of different wars and horrible things that you probably have 
even forgotten about. There was a Bosnian war that began in April of 1992, Rwandan genocide in April of 1994, the Armenian genocide in April of 1915. But okay, let's get to some stuff that you're probably going to connect with more. So Abraham Lincoln was assassinated on April 14th of 1865. The 1906 San Francisco earthquake took place April 18th of 1906. The Titanic sank April 14th into the 15th of 1912. The Red Baron killed his 80th victim before being gunned down himself in April of 1918. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated April 4th of 1968. Apollo 13, maybe you've seen the movie, great movie. Notorious, unsuccessful mission to the moon, it launched on April 11th, 1970. So they had two, two strikes against them, right? 13 and April. The Chernobyl nuclear accident happened April 26th of 1986. The 1992 Los Angeles riots after the Rodney King verdict started April 29th of 1992. The bloody end to the Branch Davidian siege in Waco, Texas, April 19th of 1993. The Oklahoma City bombing, April 19th of 1995. The Columbine High School Massacre in Littleton, Colorado, April 20th of 1999. There were a lot of tragedies in 2006 in April uh, just from weather. Uh, for example, April 2nd, uh, 29 people died in Tennessee of tornadoes. A lot of other states suffered. Uh, in 2007, there was the Virginia Tech Massacre in Blacksburg, Virginia. That was April 16th of 2007. Do you remember when the Deepwater Horizon drilling rig exploded, killing 11 people and creating one of the largest environmental disasters in history? Do you remember that? That was April 20th of 2010. April 15th of 2013, the Boston Marathon bombing. Uh, April 1st of 2014, an 8.2 magnitude Chilean earthquake and tsunami occurred. April 19th of 2014, a suspected meteorite explosion was recorded over Russia. Surely you've seen video from that. Uh, late April of 2015, there were Baltimore riots after the death of Freddie Gray. I mean, Listen, I can go on and on and on about the month of April. Hitler was born April 20th of 1889, and he died April 30th of 1945. Saddam Hussein was born April 28th of 1937, and his reign in Iraq ended with the war April 9th of 2003. You could even get into, you know, areas of religion and philosophy. Uh, you know, Anton LaVey, who founded the, the Church of Satan, he was born April 11th of 1930. A lot of scholars say they believe that Jesus was born on April 17th. And, uh, and of course, we know that, uh, that often Easter falls in April. Um, in fact, if you're not clear on how that works out, I mean, obviously this year it does because we have Easter coming up here in, uh, well, next Sunday. I looked this up. Easter and the many church holidays related to it uh, are called movable feasts which, by the way, is also the title of an Ernest Hemingway memoir. Uh, anyway, they're called movable feasts because they do not fall on a fixed date on the Gregorian calendar, which follows the cycle of the sun and the seasons. Instead, these days follow a lunisolar calendar. Okay, so basically, uh, from what I've seen here, 
it says the date of Easter is set for the first Sunday following the partial full moon which is the first full moon of spring occurring on or shortly after the spring equinox March 22nd is the earliest Easter can occur any given year and April 25th is the latest so we are in one of these cycles this year where Easter is happening in April which you know I, I I'm recording this on Monday April the 6th so yesterday was Palm Sunday and uh, you know the story is that Jesus was about to approach Jerusalem and he looked and he saw the city and he wept because he knew what was about to happen to him and, and also humanity. And then he rode in to Jerusalem on a donkey because he wanted to come as a peaceful figure. And so in this whole week, you know, you have this period of time when uh, he goes to the temple and sees that it is overrun by a den of thieves and Jesus whoops some ass which is pretty interesting you never think of Jesus whoop an ass but apparently he did uh, and then uh, he ended up having you know the last supper and then he went to the garden and then he was arrested and then uh, he was condemned to crucifixion and was in the ground or in the tomb I should say for, for three days three nights or whatever and then you know Easter is how we next Sunday would be when we celebrate that so that's a very dramatic moment whether you believe you know that or not it's attributed to this period that often falls in Easter it's also believed the Buddha was born on April the 8th and I can tell you about things that have happened within my own personal circles um, things that are more closely connected to me I mean uh, in, in the Asheville Mystery Museum we had a display about the ghoul of the old jail that appeared in terrorized prisoners April 18th and uh, April 20th of 1908 um, you could say that it was apocalyptic for the Europeans to come here to this continent and in 1513 Ponce de Leon set foot on and names Florida being the first European to do so and I'm telling you I could go on and on and on with stories relating to the month of April by the way the stone of April is the diamond and the most famous cursed gemstone is yeah the hope diamond so I, you know I have all this information in front of me but I think you get the picture and if you think that I'm just picking April out of the pile and you could say well you can go to any month throughout history and find these same clusters of misfortune and, and no no do it okay go do that and send it to me because you're full of shit I'm telling you I have looked I have done the work I have looked back at the patterns for every month throughout history and there is no month throughout at least what we can relate to as modern history that we have considered as notorious as the month of April and now here we go again right it's kind of amazing isn't it? And, and, and by the way you you might ask yourself like well what what is what is this thing called april you know what what is it all about and the romans let's see i think i've got this information here somewhere stored the the romans they called this Aprilis. Uh, okay. Yeah, Aprilis. And it comes from the verb aperere, which means to open. 
which refers to, we presume, when trees and flowers begin to open. So it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Uh, is that opening? Is that rebirth? Is that transformation? Is that what we consider bad? I mean, maybe, yes, these are all things that we consider bad, but they are definitely things that we consider transformative. And so maybe that's really what it boils down to, that humans are just scared to death of transformation. And so here we are again. Here it is, April of the year 2020. And we have this enormous amount of transformation taking place. The quickening is reaching an even higher pitch, an even faster pulsation. And you might wonder, is it really about April? Because this all kind of started in March in many places. I mean, for us here in the U.S., I'm just I'm, I'm just staying focused on where I am. You know, I'm here in the U.S. of A. So you might say, well, well, this started in March. Well, yes, it did. I know that very well. It was in mid-March when the governor of Nevada said, all right, we're closing everything down. So, you know, I've, I've been in uh, quarantine here for well over two weeks. As a matter of fact, uh, first thing I did was create some homemade wine, which I am going to be taking advantage of uh, in about 48 hours. Yeah. I, I, w w w that, I'll save that for, you know, another time. But, you know, I, 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 I say, oh, you know, give yourself something to look forward to. Always give yourself something to look forward to. So I made a little homemade. I had some yeast, some champagne yeast, and some fruits. And so, you know, it's about ready to end. But the fact of the matter is, here we are once again in which we have been put in this situation where the entire month of April, no matter where you happen to be in the civilized world, even if it started early for you, even if it's going to end late for you, the entire civilized world is going to be shut down for the month of April, more or less. So it's all climaxed here in April. And right now, we're being told by our government, well, April 30th is when hopefully, you know, we'll be able to get back to work. And like I told you earlier, I have a feeling that everything's going to kick back in in, uh, in May. So a new item to add to the list of strange and anomalous things, notorious things transformative things connected to the month of April. This would be a big one, April of 2020. So does that give you guidance? Perhaps it does, perhaps it should, uh, as you look into your future and you think about the things that you want to do and you're planning things, well, maybe you avoid April of next year. <laughs> So I told you that I have something I want to, want to share with you as a, um, a protective spell, basically. And I don't want to tell you right now exactly where this comes from. But here's what I will tell you about this. Uh, go ahead right now and get yourself a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or whatever. Um, now, you know, obviously, you can just type this in on your device if you are if you're if you're quick enough with your fingers you can do it that way as well um, but I'm going to give you a phrase that supposedly has magical properties now you know me I have got tomes of spells and magical things that go back thousands of years that I tap into for various circumstances and so I'm going to give you a phrase that makes no sense whatsoever. Okay, it's like bibbidi bobbidi boo, abracadabra, 
Uh, but what it does is supposedly trigger a, uh, it, well, it, it, it's an abstract vibration that triggers something in your brain that creates a certain field around you. Because as you well know, as you well know, I mean, you, you, you've heard this your whole life. You don't have anything if you don't have your health. And I don't talk about health and I don't talk about medical things because uh, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a physician, I'm not in a position to give you any medical advice. But this is a spell that is supposed to increase your physical energy, strength, and vitality. And it's very simple. It's two nonsensical words. But theoretically, these two nonsensical words are going to create a vibration that you can tap into that um, will provide some layer of, of power around you. So here it is. Ladash Wistar. Ladash Wistar. Now, if you're writing this down, I want you to write this down in whatever way will help you remember it. So you could put down Ladash, you could put that as L-A-H, D-A-H-Z, or you could put L-U-H. I mean, you, you, you can write this however it's going to connect with your brain. There are many ways of phonetically representing this, but it is Ladash Wistar. Ladash Wistar. Ladash Wistar. Ladash Wistar. I'm going to ask you to please not email me or message me asking me for this information because I'm giving it to you right now. Ladash Wistar. So however you need to represent that for you to be able to repeat it phonetically, that is the vibration of this particular ancient spell that I am passing along to you to create an increase in your physical energy, strength, and vitality. Without your health, you have nothing, right? Ladash Wistar. Ladash Wistar. Lodash Wistar. Lodash Wistar. You're supposed to say that uh, at least five times in a row, once or twice a day. Lodash Wistar. So like for me, for example, well, I have this printed out and I have it on my refrigerator. So when I go to my refrigerator, I go, Ladash Wistar, Ladash Wistar, Ladash Wistar, Ladash Wistar. Now, if you don't understand anything about magic or spell casting or any of that, you're like, I, this makes no sense to me. This guy is crazy. That's fine. Um, if you want to understand the logic behind it, well, I explain that in my ebook, Finding Your Magic. But Ladash Wistar is a free phrase, a free spell that I'm giving to all of you that according to the tomes that I have on hand should make a difference. Ladash Wistar. So that said, um, I'm going to wrap this podcast up because tonight, Monday, April the 6th, I am going to be the featured guest on Jimmy Church's radio show, Fade to Black, and we're going to talk for hours. Jimmy told me that we're only going to talk about coronavirus for like five minutes, and then we're going to move on from that, and we're going to get into a lot of other really interesting stuff, which I think is important, because uh, in my mind, the sooner we start getting bored and worn out with all this coronavirus bullshit, then the sooner it will just start to disintegrate and evaporate and disappear. I really believe that because 
we're talking about something that is basically parasitic. I mean, you can you can try to scientifically define a virus however you want to, but but it, 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 it's basically a parasite. And I think the sooner that we just say, you know, fuck you, and just lose interest in this shit and get bored and move on, then 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 the sooner it's going to just sort of evaporate into the history books, and we can move on with our lives. And so tonight, hopefully, you can tune in to Fade to Black. Um, it starts at 7 p.m. Pacific time, which would be 10 p.m. East Coast time. So basically, if you're in California, it's going to be 7 p.m. And if you're in New York, it's going to be 10 p.m. Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. You should be able to listen live for free. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to... Huh, our very long and interesting conversation. You know, I, I just recently met Jimmy Church for the first time in person when he came here to Vegas to uh, experience the Creepy Vegas Ghost and UFO show. He and Rita came, and man, did we have a blast. And that was one of the last, like, really fun nights that I had before all of this bullshit hit the fan. So, uh, we're going to have a great conversation tonight. And, and you know, it's funny because it's one thing to have a conversation on, on the radio, so to speak, when um, it's somebody you've never met. But when you've met that person in person, it kind of changes the dynamic of the conversation. There, there's a new level of, um, of sort of engagement and you know, Jimmy is everything I always imagined he would be. And uh, so I think we're going to have a really interesting conversation tonight. I hope you can tune in for that. But uh, also, I, I still am working on these TV shows, believe it or not. Yeah, I still am. <laughs> Hopefully this will get wrapped up pretty soon. Um, but yeah, while, while everybody else is hunkering down and just you know, trying, you know, eating popcorn and watching Netflix. I, I, I've been working through all of this, um, on, on various projects. So I feel fortunate, you know, I feel, I feel good. I mean, I, I am, I, you know, I, I'm in a position where I can still get paid even in the middle of the plague, you know? So I'm very happy, uh, that that is working out well, but I will tell you before I sign off here that every single night, I step out on my balcony and I listen to Ursula Burns harp music as I look at the coronavirus fear ending sigil. Every night I do that. And that's no joke. I do that every night. It's well, it, it, it's beautiful. It's decompressing. And I hope that you will do that as well especially if you don't have anything else going on. I mean, just go out and do it. Her, her music is 10 minutes long. Listen to it and look at the sigil because we are going to bring all this stuff to an end much more quickly than the fear mongers are, are telling us that we will. I hope that you will, whatever you're doing, at least go to my website, joshuapwarren.com you can click around and explore and see all kinds of interesting stuff pictures videos all that stuff is free go to the curiosity shop even if you don't intend to buy anything just look at the stuff in the curiosity shop and while, while you're there clicking around at joshuapwarren.com i hope you will click the link to this podcast called joshua p warren daily it's always short always free, commercial free, independent, uncensored. And when you click that link, you can subscribe through various means or just follow me on Twitter at Joshua P. Warren, at Joshua P. Warren. And I will usually tweet when a new one is available. If you like this independent content, then it is your responsibility to share it with all of your friends and loved ones. Because I don't do this, you know, podcast to talk to myself. I do this to talk to you. And the more people 
that listen, the better. So please spread this around. If you like what I'm doing, if you like this podcast, it is your responsibility. The least you can do is to share it with everybody else. So that said, thank you for listening. Thank you for your interest and support. Thank you for staying curious. And I will talk to you again soon.